What is the capacity of the logging in now? That's, that's, that's okay. That 135 is a... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to our inaugural State of the University Andres. And before I start, allow me to recognize that we are staff members and the council members. Logged with us, there is a chairman of the council and also the council members. Distinguished Ladies and gentlemen, staff members of Chuka University and the council members, good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been one year and three months since the council and my administration took over Chuka University. And as part of our accountability to you as stakeholders of this great institution, it is a good practice to give to you a state of the university address. The focus of uh, this address shall be on the following areas. The fiscal or financial stability, policy directions, other across division updates, and finally, the agenda of the management for the next one year. Ladies and gentlemen, before I address you, allow me to thank all of you and the, my administration. In particular, I want also to thank those who came before us. In a special way, allow me to salute the leadership of our founding VC, Professor Elastar Joker, who is currently also a staff member at the Department of Animal Science. In the same vein, I also want to salute other founding leaders who started this university, the founding VC, the DVCs, the deans, the chair of department, and the staff members. And also thank our former acting vice chancellor, Professor Dr. Sisusa, for the stewardship that they provided to this university. As your current CEO, allow me to also immensely thank the staff for the support and the hard work and your determi determination to serve this university. I also likewise commit to continue working hard and to serve you and this university to the best of my capability at all times. Having said the above, allow me now to deliver to you the state of the university address. Allow me to start with the fiscal or financial stability and the related policy directions that we are taking for the university. I want to start by informing all of us that the university has navigated through some financial difficulties and managed to break through and have a annual fiscal stability. When we took over, it was the same time the new national financing model for the universities was started. And this model, in simple, it is a model where funding of the universities are based on the student the university attract. And the policy hit us a bit hard because by the f close of June, 2023, our financial balances was 
thousand, and we needed to pay the salaries of uh, July to September. We also had owed part-time lecturers 151 million. And collectively, we had to, set, to sit together and see how we can navigate. And I am proud to say we were able to pay the July to September salaries of 2023 and also to pay the part-time lecturers. In addition, the council members are aware that we inherited a debt of 1 billion and 92 of unpaid certificate for capital projects. And also, the staff reviews were 2013, 2017 CBA had not been registered. And of course now the 2017, 2021 CBA is yet to be negotiated. That was the reality. I'll cover each of them at a time. Again, our university charter was under threat because the minimum requirement is 50 acres where the seat of the university is. And out of the 50.3 acres, 2.5 acres and had been repossessed by the county government of the Rakanithi. Ladies and gentlemen, although the books that clo the books closed with a balance of 398,223 as of 30th June 2023, as your management and with your support, we were able to navigate through these difficulties and I thank you all for the support. Now, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to expressively give you the feedback on the navigation path towards our current fiscal stability. One, pay payment of July to September 2023 salaries was achieved through some free toll bank negotiations and we thank KCB and equity for that far. We also embarked on a very serious internal budgetary reduction. We also streamlined processes and these interventions enabled us to go through the year and finish the year as of 30th September 2024 with a committed salary surplus of 335 million. This, I say hallelujah, and we are then able to pay the salary of July, August, and also September without necessarily going back to the, to the banks to negotiate. And therefore, we are going to manage this university with the support of the, of the council in a way that we shall maintain this financial, physical stability, God willing, and through your support. As of uh, the pending part-time bills, we had to make a decision to take up this bill and we processed it although it wasn't disclosed, it was somewhere uh, put in uh, papers in the box. And we are able to pay. We had the Office of the Auditor General 
questioned us about this non-disclosure, but we were able to discuss and agree that it was a necessary bill that needed to be retired so that our part-time lecturers could continue giving us the services. And I'm happy they understood, and now we were able to retire that. Capital project bills, the one billion and one, one billion and 92 million was actually submitted to the government as spending bills. And at the same time, through the guidance of the uh, planning committee and the council in general, we were able to work through to ensure that we can maintain the projects. And I'm happy to report to you that out of that, the 369 million owed to Science Park has been paid up, and also other certificates have been paid on this project, and it is continuing, and it is due to be finished very soon. All of us can uh, look at that wing and see that we are in the final stages of completing and roofing, and this will be available for our use. We have a library. The library had accumulated 222 million. And this being the, the project that is, came the latest, the government advice was that we obey that one for the, for the time being, and we continue uh, with the others that are almost in the completion. The mail hostel, we also cleared the bill of 84 million, and we have also cleared the bill of the food science and technology of 51 million and 27 million for the milk plant. For the male hostel and the admin, we have a challenge, and this is because the contractor is not coming back, he has refused to come back, and therefore we have formed a, a Senate committee read by Professor Nanwa and Professor uh, Kawera, and they are navigating together with a, our legal officer on how we can be able to have these buildings given to us when they are partially complete, so that another contractor who is willing can continue with the, with the building. However, I need to retaliate. We don't owe the contractor anything other than the retention fees. And we have saved the ret retention fee. In case you want to give us, we shall pay promptly. Our policy with the council has been we should, we should engage in prioritized functional completion of the projects so that the project can be finished and become functional and utilized for the benefit of the university. And we shall do this in sequence based on the capability. We don't want to have certificate accumulating here and bills uh, threatening the physical stability of the university. In terms of the 38 million that has been pending from the implementation of 2017-2021 CBA, the council gave direction that instead of burying our head under the sand, this debt ought to be paid, acknowledged and paid to the staff members, and it shall be paid in three installments, each payable within the remaining three quarters as a bulk outside the payroll. So quarter, the next, this quarter, the coming quarter, we, this quarter we are going to pay a third of it, the next and the other third of it. And this will be paid and the process of uh, apportioning what belongs to who, including those who might have retired, will be done through a joint uh, implementation committee that involves the union. Staff reviews, I am happy to report that the council gave direction in terms of how to review the staff and we, in a sustainable way. It was resolved that Kutheya be reviewed before the end of the last financial year and we did that apart from those who are not reached three years and they are scheduled for review together with Kusu in, the, in this before, the, before December this year. They have been told to apply 
and this sort listing is being sorted out and they will be reviewed soonest. The academic member of staff, Uasu, we developed a policy that is progressive and automatic, meaning every time you achieve the criteria, you apply and then that quarter you will be reviewed. We had, this, we had very many big numbers because of the delays, but I have seen what the, the numbers that have applied now are getting smaller and smaller. I envisage with the time there are even some quarters that we are not likely to even be receiving any reviews. However, I want to urge all of us, use that form in the best of your knowledge and honesty because we shall not promote you if you don't deserve it. If it is professors, you are aware that you must have attracted funds and that you have to give us evidence so that we are also known to be a university of standards. We have some matters of internal CMBAs that are pending, but I'm happy to report this has been taken up nationally and it is be, it's one of the items to be nego negotiated through the Joint Interministerial National Committee and we shall await their direction and implement appropriately. We had some issues on medical, medical allowances for the staff working for our clinic and I am also glad to report we have received communication that gives us direction on which allowances to pay and how, how much to pay. And this is being implemented as per that letter. It is good also to give you an update on statutory deductions. The other day, some people were trying to put fake uh, memos that we don't pay statutory deductions. I am happy to tell you, we have paid all statutory deductions and we shall continue paying everything and on time. So feel relaxed as staff members, there is nothing wrong with that. I would like to talk about uh, other updates and allow me now to speak on the ranking of the university. In the just ended 2023-2024 academic year, our university was ranked number 24 compared to that two in the previous, the previous academic year. This achievement is attributed to our collective efforts, particularly by enhancing our web, website presence, visibility, transparency, and excellence. In particular, allow me to say we can do better in this area, especially when all of us sign into the Ngogo Scholar. We upload our CVs, our publications, and we also create and activate our educational resource, resources such as ebook, tutorials, white papers, and create also personal websites. And we need to share also our research findings and sharing the followers that we disseminate these research findings with the communities. This has been a challenge, and I want to urge all of us, when you are going out to do an event, contact Mwangi Morema, contact uh, Dr. Namuria, contact any of our health champions so that we can capture and increase your profile as we also increase the profile of the university. In this regard, the university appointed webometric committee led by Mr. Mwangi Morema and also SAIF, they are part of that committee and they have gone ahead to recruit departmental champions. And we would like all of us to utilize them so that we can also be able, wherever we are partners, provide bank links with those partner institution websites. And I'm telling you collectively, we are targeting. We have done some analysis. Of course, if we are to be ranked today, our rank is under 20. So we expect most likely 
if we hit 15, 15 to 18, then the other year we can be targeting under 10 in the country. We thank God for that. So what I'm asking here as a policy, let us all endeavor to cooperate and engage in activities that positively brand our university. Allow me to talk about the favorability ranking of this university by potential students. I'm glad to say in this current financial year or like academic year 2024-2025, our university attracted and enrolled 5,681 students compared to 4,160 in the previous year. Of these, 4,786 are government sponsored and 895 are self sponsored. The self sponsored has also improved this year in the tune from 238 of the previous year for bachelors to 389 students. For diplomas, it has moved from 144 to 274. And for certificate, it has moved from 106 to 232 students. This improvement is commendable, and I want to give many thanks to the admissions office. The officers led by Dr. Chege, the Mwangala, we have Kip, Kimutai, and the group, you have done a good job. Thank you very much. We also got a big boost from our alumni, led by Mr. Kingori. They actually marketed us in the, in the local dialects. They went to those stations, and this was very good. Career services led by Joyce Mogoi and Mr. Njaunini, who actually produced a lot of letters for the self-sponsored student, and also the Public Relations and Marketing Department by Dr. Namuria, our radio crew led by one other than James Wainaina, and the student fraternity who have marketed this university registry. We need to carry on with this marketing together with also making sure the students that come to our university, we treat them well, we treat them fairly, and we make their life in campus for the marketing. Because if we don't do that, then they'll demarket us. So our policy will continue to support all these stakeholders so that we can continue attracting students. We, I want to talk now about the QUE, the Commission for University Education and other audits. I am glad to say Nairobi campus was audited on 18th March 2024 by Commission for University Education and we were able to obtain an interim certificate. The Council of Legal Education also came to audit our law program and it passed. Our Odell campus, we are paid the dues for audit and we expect QUE to audit soon. The university in entirety underwent the five-year commission for university audits between 22nd and 25th of April and we were given excellent clean or bill. The professional bodies for nutrition and dietetics, engineering board, health records, public and public health, we have contacted them and we have agreed we pay all the bills accrued so that our programs can be accredited and continue attracting uh, students. I thank all those who are involved in this process I, in particular, would want to pay tribute to Professor Koromba during the Commission of University Education audit process. She tirelessly delivered the task. Internationalization and national presence. I'm glad to say the university international standing has increased courtesy of the summer school which attracted participants from 87 countries. Next year, we expect to have two of them. 
the same summer school with another cohort and another one that is expected to is is being grown between the Jewy University in the United States that is likely to also bring international students to Choka. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, we need to continue attracting external partners. And our policy is to have an open door with our, our potential international partners. And wherever you get one of them, bring, bring them here and we shall be able to engage. So as I can conclude on this, is to tell you that Chuka University is now properly seated in the national, regional, and global arena. This is a milestone. At the national level, this university has become a national reference for benchmarking. We have received many universities that have come to benchmark, and we have also received comments that the university is progressing well. We continue to maintain our excellence performance and also improve on the marks. We, we expect that one to be the result to come soon, and we are getting a better mark in excellence. And I want to thank Florence, uh, Madam Florence Modua, for religiously carrying out this task together with our team, Enea and Jogona. This is well applauded. External resource mobilization. One of the challenges that we had when we, ca we came in is that there was very little meager resources that were coming from external donors. And I'm happy to report that in the, academ the academic year 2023-2024, the university attracted 176 million, 7,440 7, shillings. And these funds, a, a chunk of them, 40 million, 053-303 was in form of development funds, including the conferences that we have been at, uh, holding here. While the, la the rest of it came from the research projects from the following, Professor Monyere, Professor Gadongo, Professor Koromba, Professor Keremi, Professor Mutembei, hi the VC, and Dr. Monene of Animal Science. The contribution by the Directorate of Resource Mobilization, Professor Moguna, to mobilize 20 million is also highly appreciated. This is a new shift, ladies and gentlemen, and it is in a positive way the best way to sustain our physical stability. And therefore, as we immensely appreciate those who have attracted the resources, we are calling upon others, dons, please engage in this uh, external mobilization and also exploit our policy. We normally say if you mount a cost, for example, the one that uh, Dr. Nyama and Moguna, they brought in for human resource. The first 10% of the proceedings goes to the person who developed that. Then the others share the, the that percent. And then now the 60% can be for the university. And with, with three cohorts, then the one who did the 10% now since the 10, so that the whole of the group shares the 40%, so that they can go ahead and look for new projects. And I am glad also, Professor Muraya and the group, you are aware pro projects are coming up. One is supposed to support interinstitutional research. And this, I have nominated Professor Muraya to represent us in that project. And there is postgraduate training that is expected to be trained across the country for 174, 87 masters and 87 PhDs. This is an extension from the Kenya Climate Smart Project, which I have shared nationally. 
and I am proud to report that the country and the management of the new project have approached me to share again. And therefore, I am calling upon us to exploit these two opportunities so that we can be able to have many of our postgraduate sponsored through these two projects. About security, it is prudent that a university should provide secure and serene working and standing environment. And I am happy to report that the security department is ensuring the following through the following. One, they are doing daily patrols and having presence of uniform police within the university and in the areas where we reside and our students reside. There is also the partnership with the SIPU county and sub-county commanders who have agreed to offer us a road cruiser dedicated to this university that will be offering this security service on a daily basis. Before we used to borrow the vehicle, or the, our officers used to walk by foot. We thank the Minister of Interior for that consideration. The security department have also started some initiative, the Nyumbakumi or the Land Road Nyumbakumi initiative, and also the student Nyumbakumi initiatives that enable us to detect, respond, and process any criminal activities within the university and its environs. We have also established two free toll calling numbers, 0 800 that is 0 and 0 800 for safety and medical calling, meaning Wherever anybody is uh, threatened by security, you can call that number. Our department will respond promptly to your needs. We also have regular safety and rescue training drills for the officers that serve us in case of anything they are ready to respond. We also have quick and seamless processing of security cases being done by our security department. This together, ladies and gentlemen, can make you to relax and work without feeling that your security is threatened. Support for the academic and administrative functions. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to say our policy is to support all ac academic and administrative functions that advance the mandate of this university. In particular, all materi materials required for teaching are procured. You are requested, procured, and we support that. Academic trips, we support that. Field attachment and assessment, we are also supporting that. Placement and assessment of a student, I want to admit, post some challenges this year, where students started saying there are, there are delays in assessing them. And I'm happy that a seamless process was discussed and agreed upon between the Wasu Secretary General, Mr. Motindi, the deans, and the CODs with the, with the DVC, Halsa. This is to ensure all requests must be done in, in quite on time. They will be processed, and also to ensure that there is timely assessment of the student. But colleagues, allow me to also bring in the context of the, what is happening across other universities when it comes to assessment of student. We need, through the Senate, to actually evolve and utilize technologies to ensure the officers who host our student can also contribute towards assessment of our hosted student and that paperless assessment can take place to avoid delays in processing of our results, which is usually through delayed reports that have not been marked. So we are asking the Senate, together with the unions, to agree on a benchmark 
on what other universities do so that you can do like uh, ODK. You can be able to go assess the student and then the results come out. I was perplexed, I can say that. One time I was in a Macaulay Girls and the, the officer who came to assess the student in a teaching practice assessed them and the student just saw their results. That is what I, I, need, I think we need to go to that route. Not to come here and wait for three months for a report to be marked. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to have a policy in that area so that in all services and payment, we don't want our staff to be queuing at the, staff, at the finance department. We would like the, the, the staff to offer services and they are paid without even feeling any, any pinch. That is the policy we want to put across. We have engaged in general repairs and maintenance. Allow me to talk about that a little bit. And one, one of the areas that we have retired, it is this syndrome of the student carrying chairs from one lecture hall to another. It was a problem that the student had approached, has and said they are tired, and chairs were breaking on the way. We managed to buy extra shares for the student and eliminated this syndrome in totality. Today, the student just walk into lecture halls and they are comfortable. We have also repaired and uh, caused a facelift in the following facilities. One, the students were complaining about Mudaiga Hostel because it was not partitioned and we have completed the partitioning and the hall now is completely full. All the hostels, the students were complaining of the floor and also lack of internet. We have tiled those old hostels and provided internet. I am informed the internet provision is continuing, but we are through that handle. Ruda hostels, there was a lot of plumbing and abrusion issues. We have cleared that. We have uh, done the plumbing and repaired those completely. Business complex, all of us can agree the business complex was not looking good. We have put someone there. The, the painting is taking place. At least we had given him a, a target that before the lecture halls, the, the, the student come back, the lecture halls must be repentant. This I am pleased to announce it has taken place. The recreation center, all of us can agree the White House doesn't look very well, very nice when you look at it from the outside. It is, seems to be growing some uh, black spots. We have already given, uh, given out this work and we expect this to be painted before graduation. Inside, those of you who have gone to the inside, literally, you realize that we bought new tables and chairs that befit an hotel of a university. The, there was one time the county council was doing some repairs of the road towards the forest and our water pipes were cut off. This is when we realized our 12 million water tank here, it is not connected to the watering system of the university. And we embarked on buying a pump and the connections that, the integration connections that will ensure wherever we have a water shortage, then it, we can easily connect the system and the water lands. This is in force and it was actually tested and therefore we are now on course to ensure that we don't get water disruptions. In addition, the water pump that came with was when Mudaiga was being opened, had fault issues, and we have managed to buy one that is automated, and then now the student should not have any problems with water articulation at that hostel. When we came in, my friends, dear ladies and gentlemen, the football field next to the pavilion was dusty. We have restored that one, and now it is green, and we want to keep and maintain it green at all times. This is one of the things that markets the university very well. 
if you go to most of these universities, you find very dusty fields, and it is not very good as an image. Conferencing facilities. We have been able to repair seats and install executive conference seats at room 305 and 306 in the recreation center. Media, the ground floor of the, uh, of the recreation center and the business complex. Therefore, members of staff, wherever you have distinguished guests and you want to also have your seminar, please utilize this conference and also be able to share the same. And this one has actually changed the image of the university significantly. We also embarked on a facelift of the kitchen, the student mess, and we are able to be able to tile inside there. And also, roof. The roofing was uh, leaking a lot. The computer science roofing was also uh, leaking, and we have been able to manage that. And I say thank you for the director facilities, wherever you are, Justin Gaduru, kundos. We are in the process of equipping our TV media room so that now we'll have that department having equipment both on the radio and the TV rooms. This is going on. Allow me to talk about our campuses and their status. Chogoria campus has currently 322 stu 320 students, 66 of which enrolled this year. We have a challenge there because we don't have a title deed, but the chairman of the council is working on this tirelessly, and soon there will be celebrations. Embu campus. Embu campus, we are continuing to repair. We repaired and we are continuing to approve to repair. And currently, the campus has 383 students, six, six of which were enrolled this year. This campus, the director has given a direction that he wants to mount professional courses, short, short professional courses, and also try to ensure it is Tiveta accredited so that it can also attract Tivet students who will be self-sponsored. Nairobi campus, having been accredited, it has picked very well. The first cohort has 47 students, and it is pointing towards a campus that will be there for computer science and business studies. And these students are continuing to, to, to undertake their studies there. We have actually bought five whiteboards, we have bought chairs, and we have bought computers for the Nairobi campus. Again, the campus, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to say it is not doing well. It did not attract any student this, this academic year. And it has a total of 27 students only. This is a concern to all of us and the council. And we are working on it to ensure that now that it has become Tiveta accredited, we put upon the weight to the director, Dr. Kamoyo, to actually engage the community so that they can mount Tivet courses there that will make this campus vibrant. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to announce that we partnered with the Wajil te uh, Teachers Training College with an endeavor to have a Wajil center, just a center where the Wajil the people in that region can be able to enroll through our Odell, and if need be, they can be attending those classes within the center in Wajil Teachers Training College. I am proud and pleased to announce that this enrollment of this year, we got 53 students. And I want to appreciate our director on Dell, Dr. Kadenge, for that initiative. And they are continuing to study within that center. Let us not uh, confuse, this one is not a campus. It is a center where these people would come register, and if there have any issues, they can come together, and then they are taught from one class, which is Odell. 
Allow me to talk about the income generating units of the university. All income generating units present their quarterly reports to the council through the management. And they are expected to operate profitably. I'm proud to say through the, our intervention as management and council, all the income generating units are being transformed from loss making to profit making. In the academic year of financial year 2023-2024, collectively, the income generating units that made profit brought into the university 116 million 355 771 shillings. However, when you, co when you compare this, this is very good because the previous financial year, the same income generating brought only that 1 million 851 474 shillings. However, the firm on its own made losses of 11 million. 815, 514. This prompted the council to make a decision for a leadership change into the farm management and also introduce the task the, the farm to introduce other enterprises that will cover these losses. It is explained that 11 million losses per year is the attributed to the, to the maintenance of the, the fruit trees that have not yet started to yield. However, we, it was said, if they take like five years, that will be 55 million, and they, they most likely those fruits will never give us back that money. So that is why we have implemented the resolution to, to see whether the leadership change can cut on, especially, the operational costs, that is where the main problem is. Just to mention briefly to all of us so that you can uh, get where this money is coming from, we have the following IGUs. The dispensary was able to achieve, was able to achieve money in, ex in itself, that is, the dispensary was able to get two million, then we have student mess also made two million. Staff cafeteria broke even. We have the L side was able to bring to us 5.3 million. And recreation services, which is the gym, contributed about 1 million. We have student hostel. This is where we are. Last year, we are able to get 11.9 million from the hostel. And then we were able to convert our hire of gowns, and the gowns brought in 2.9 million. And the Ring Plaza, that is after ensuring that all debt that had accumulated have been paid, we were able to get 8 million point eight, eight point eight million, and. This is a good shift, and we will not go back. The policy is any manager who is running the IGU, when it enters into losses, you will have to separate with us, then we get another manager. That is the direction of the council. Let me talk about the notable events that we have been able to have in, at the Chuka University for the last one year. I will start with the launch of the MT4 that was launched here at Chukam by the none other than Professor Honorable Kedole Kendiki, Minister for Interior and Administration. That was here. Others include the Green Moot Court, which is actually ongoing. That will be reported even next year. Faculty of Science and Technology, they were able to mount the AMNET conference, and also the Generative AI conference, which attracted actually the 
head of uh, mission for the DAD in Nairobi. And I want to thank Professor Kamwero, Kamwero for that, together with the, the chair of the department. Faculty of Humanities did its inaugural conference, and it was very successful, thanks to Professor Keboro and your team. Nursing conference was also very successful, and I want to thank the nursing team, led by Professor Ruse Getonga. Nairobi Summer School, it was a collective venture for all of us. I want to thank everybody, and in particular, Professor Moraya and the group that steered that uh, conference, the, the summer school, including the other team members. This was a management venture. I was able to bring the Pagja team here, and they are happy, and they will be coming back again. East Africa Grain Council Expo also was very successful. Took place um, in March in this university with a lot of farmers and others who came in. Chuka Cultural Week, we had a very successful cultural week with the students. In fact, it attracted very many views at the TikTok and our radio clips. And this contributed a lot to the marketing of the university. Currently, the university is, is hosting the, the Safaricom partnership, which is coming here to actually talk to comrades on technology, culture, and career. And the tent is already in the field. Again, sports, our able football team, supported by all other students, were able to win the Chapadimba of the Eastern region. And they went to the nationals. And this one also played a very great role in marketing us, thanks to the Dean of Student and your, 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 your team. We are proud of you. Let's, uh, now I want to spell out the leadership policy that we, we are put together with our management. I subscribe personally to both the democratic and servant leadership styles. That means I allow everyone to express themselves and at the same time to feel free to innovate in all the areas that they work. This has allowed this, this office to be available to every officer of the university and the any other visiting stakeholders. This way, we have agreed in management to operate an open, honest, and consultative open policy leadership. I likewise, therefore, would expect that all of us should exercise the same. When you have an open, transparent, you expect then the services should be offered promptly, should be of high quality and timely. This, we shall not take anything less than that. Meaning, anybody who doesn't do their, their work promptly, in a qualitative way and in a timely way, then will have to explain to us why that is not possible. We have also a policy where merit will be applied in all staff reviews for promotions. It shall be earned though. You have to earn your merit. There is no favorism here. That is what I'm trying to put across. You don't have to come and see anybody to be reviewed. You will be reviewed. No personal issues will be put in any reviews as long as my administration is in force. The decisions and uh, our decisions and actions must promote public and institutional interest. And therefore, we don't want any selfish interests put in any of our services. 
And we must protect and respect each other. And also respect the independence of thought and expression. This is very important, colleagues. If, for example, you don't want to come to work, you don't have to tell someone else not to come to work like you. Just allow somebody to do their work based on their soul and their conviction as a patriotic worker of this university. And everything we do must reflect our core values. And our core values, we reduce them to five so that everybody can be able to understand them very easily. Sustainability. If you do anything that is not going to sustain us, that is against the core values. Freedom of expression. Allow anybody to express themselves, but don't force your expression into others. Excellence. We need to be giving excellent quality services, integrity, teamwork, and we have to be confidential as per the policy. Allow me now to finalize this with a five-year agenda of the university together with the, the agenda of the management. Our overall agenda is clearly spelled out in our strategic plan. This strategic plan was launched in January 2023, and it, was, it has been revised subsequently and approved in June 2024 by the council and it has very few focus areas, six, and 20 objectives. Please, let us remain focused and also remain true to this strategic plan. As for me, I have stipulated my five-point agenda that is clearly put in the website. And this, if you look at that, that agenda, you'll find that it tries to ensure there is a improved financial, operational stability, labor efficiency, and it promotes human resource that is free to work without coercion, human resource that is free to feel proud to be members of Chuka University. I will finalize the three minutes, you just informing us our threats. Ladies and gentlemen, we know where Ijaton has been, where the financial stability was really threatened and we had it, they ended up handing half of their salary. What can really cause our threat? One of them is an unpredictable academic careers. If we start to be known to be a university of strikes, to be known a university that will be disrupting academic careers, then be ready not to attract any students and be ready that we shall not have enough salaries to pay our salaries, uh, enough resources to pay our salaries. Examples exist, Ijaton, Technical University of Kenya, they're having those kind of problems and, and many others. Unstable and saline and non-saline working environment, we have to secure our environment. Poor services, we cannot afford to mistreat our student, neither can we afford to offer any poor quality services to anybody. We have to achieve the quality so that we can maintain our university standards. Governance, I expect everybody to understand that you govern, you are in a position because you can be able to govern and you can be able to openly and transparently offer services of leadership in your unit. Lack of inclusive and diversity, we are going to remain to be one university for everybody at equal measure. Now, there is a policy direction that I want to put here that uh, I'm sure the council is, uh, is here. It will give a direction. And the direction is as follows. That any officer who is serving in any office that is attracting responsibility allowance, the deputy vice chancellor, the deans, the directors, the COD, the, uh, the end of department, examination officers, etc. You are all part of the 
administration, and therefore you cannot, I repeat, you cannot participate in union activities. In many universities and everywhere, these officers transit into what is called NZFV status. That means you continue paying your union dues, but your status is NZC status. And when your tour of duty is over, you go back to the union. Similarly, that is the same st status I have for the University of Nairobi Union. Finally, members of the staff, I once again want to applaud you for your, in a special way, and thank you from my heart for the immense support you have accorded my management and I as we steer this universe forward. I want in a particular manner to recognize and thank the Council of Chuka University for giving us guidance, proper guidance, and not interfering with our, our, our operations. And we have felt the Council work very professionally, and it has been supportive. And we thank you all. And I thank you on behalf of the management and the entire uh, Chuka University staff. I want to also retaliate that we should all safe, safeguard the glory of this university to the last drop of our life. This is where we get our, our, our daily bread from. This is where our legacy will be defined, including if this university went down, you, you, it will still be known you are a lecturer here when it went down, you are a staff here when it went down. And this has been my personal motivation every day that I leave my house at 7 a.m. to come and serve the university and serve you all. Thank you all for listening to me. God bless you all. God bless Chuka University. God bless our motherland Kenya. Thank you.